English rural appeared to fit best with our aims and philosophy. Once the relationship was established, we started to look at the bigger picture as a board and our long-term future. We asked ourselves, are we really able to keep on top of governance and to continue to recruit good calibre board members, or would it be better to align ourselves to a larger organisation? It took about 18 months from board agreement to completion. It was not particularly difficult as we employed an independent business support advisor who was an excellent bridge between the parties and the two sets of lawyers. There were some extra meetings and towards completion a good deal of paperwork to read and digest, but at no time did it feel overwhelming. At first, several board members and shareholders expressed reservations, mostly due to fears that our local identity would be lost. However, these objections faded away when the pros and cons of the merger had been fully thrashed out and we were able to continue with our local board, our local name and our housing manager was employed by English Rural. Keep an open mind. Take time to find an organisation that you can gel with and which shares your aims. Consider employing an independent consultant to explain the pros and cons to your board in a professional and unemotional manner. And think hard about the long-term future for your tenants. I would say entirely positive. They retain the housing manager they are used to, but she is now supported by the English Rural team. English Rural have developed an online portal, so our tenants have easier ways of paying rent and asking for repairs. Feedback from our tenants has been favourable. It's taken me out of my comfort zone, but it's been a window onto a wider world, and I can view the bigger picture of rural housing. I have regular board training on topics such as diversity, crisis management and data protection, all of which I feel makes me a more effective chairman of the new Forest Board.